Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott, and I'm just saying that so that you'll like me. It's been another lousy month here at Reindeer Studios, and I'm just being silly. It's time for my May recap. Today, I'm doing a buttload of VRs, not the biggest buttload I've ever done, and you know, that, that sounded kind of weird. Um, I've got a super cool baseball that I want to show you, and I've got some pickups that I want to show off. Uh, including some stuff from the Pittsburgh Mainline show, which was a lot of fun. So let's do this. Okay, we're going to start with my best friend Joe at Four Soft Corners. Joe is celebrating his 100th video and he wants to see celebration cards. Most people have been showing cards of players celebrating something, like this piece I made here with Len Barker celebrating his perfect game in 1981, but I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show the cards that I've bought myself to celebrate my birthday every year since I've been back in the hobby. Because, you know, that's something that I do instead of putting Mrs. Reindeer through trying to buy me something. In 2018, I bought this T206 Cy Young, and I am so glad I bought this one when I did. In 2019, I bought my T206 Addy Joss portrait, still one of my all-time favorite cards. I expanded my horizons in 2020, and I picked up a Roger Maris rookie card. In 2021, I celebrated by buying this Venezuelan Bob Feller, and I bought this one raw at a card show, and I had it slabbed. And last year for my birthday, I bought myself this high number 1967 Rocky Calavito. This one is usually kind of pricey and it was pretty tough to find, but I got a heck of a deal and it is a beaut. So congrats, Joe. But uh, speaking of this Roger Maris rookie card, my best friends Paul and Leah at Fast Breaks and Breakfast are celebrating 200 subs and they want to see cards of players on weird teams. Roger here obviously was famous for being a Yankee, but he started out in Cleveland. And you know, this is kind of a famous card, so a lot of you already knew that. But here are a bunch of guys that played in Cleveland briefly that you may or may not have known or remembered. So here's a signed Jeff Kent, who was miserable during his 39 game stint in Cleveland. These next few are all guys that actually finished their careers with uh, brief stints in Cleveland, because once you play here, what else is there to accomplish, right? Uh, Juan Gan, more famous for being a Texas Ranger, had an excellent year in Cleveland in 2001. He played a few more years after that, but he came back for one plate appearance to finish his career in 2005. Uh, Philly legend Steve Carlton had a 23-game stint with the Tribe in 1987. He actually played 13 more games after that in Minnesota before calling it quits, but we won't count that. Uh, Jack Morris pitched his final 23 games in Cleveland in 1994. And Dave Winfield finished his career in Cleveland with 46 games in 1995. So there you have it, Paul. I obviously wasn't around for Maris, and I don't really remember Steve Carlton in Cleveland, but I was super excited about all those other guys when they came around. And speaking of Paul, Leah, and Joe, my best friend Jim wants us to send in cards for a big community giveaway and give some shout outs to channels with less than 300 subs. So Four Soft Corners and Fast Breaks and Breakfast, they criminally have less than 300, so definitely go check them out. A few more channels you should check out are Signs of the Pastime, who I shouted out last month. Uh, Mookie Chilson has 24 subs and he's doing a great job so far. He recently showed off his collection of pinhole cards, which he displays in all of their glory on a cork board. It's fun stuff. Uh, Tom at Souvenir Programs here is at 59 subs. He does a fantastic job telling stories about old players you may not know about. And you know I love my stories. And then there's Stuke's Baseball Cards and Curiosities. His name is Scott, and us Scott's got to stick together, you know. But uh, I've gotten to know him a little bit more recently, and his collection of oddball stuff is really cool. I could go on and on, and there are a ton of channels worthy of a shout-out, like Old Sarge Collects and Peter B. and Concrete Buddy and Staven Sports Cards and on and on and on but I gotta keep the ball rolling here. Here's what I'm sending to Jim to include with his big community giveaway, which I think is a fantastic idea. Here's a 1979 Nolan Ryan, a 75 Highlight Tank Aaron, a Jim Rice rookie card in honor of Jim, and in honor of me, one of my all-time favorite rookie cards, a 1955 Topps Don Mossy. So I hope these work for you, Jim. And speaking of my favorite rookie cards, my best friend Sammy Thunder is back from a little hiatus and he simply wants to see some of our favorite rookie cards. You know, I showed the Roger Maris and the Don Mossy already. So here are my Lou Boudreaux rookies. You got the Leaf and the Bowman. Here's my early win rookie. I love that one. Two of my Al Rosen rookies. This one was gifted to me by Chris from Missouri and this autograph one was a gift from Sean Tiford. 
Here's my Rocky Calavito rookie. That is a beautiful card. Uh, getting a little newer here with an Eckersley rookie. Here's my Julio rookie and my Joe Carter rookie. Two of my favorite players from my childhood. So it's good to see you back in action, Sammy. Ooh, I only paid 15 bucks for that Joe Carter slab there. Speaking of cheap slabs. My best friend Theo, aka Clemente Collector, wants to see us sing about cheap slabs that were under 30 bucks. Well, I have it on good authority that the internet does not want to hear me sing anymore after hearing the Bean song, I love Beans, and me butchering Chuck Berry last month. And as far as $30 go, if you were collecting before COVID, it was really easy to score cheap slabs. So probably 70 to 80% of the slabs I own were under 30 bucks. So I'm going to show slabs I bought for under $10. And there's still too many, so bear with me here. Here's an SGC 10 Manny Rookie I paid a whopping $3.25 for. Here are PSA 9 Jim Tomey Rookies. I paid $10 for this lot of two. I might have been 15 for three of them. I, I think I gave one of those away. Uh, PSA 9 Don't Call Me Joey Bell Rookies, $10 for a lot of 10 of those. So that was a dollar a piece for the math challenged out there. And that was unnecessarily mean, I'm sorry. A lot of Sandberg rookie cards. I paid $7.56 each. Everybody's favorite Hall of Famer who also played in Cleveland, Paul. BGS 8.5 was $7.00. El Presidente rookie card in a BVG 7.5. I won that for an opening bid of $1. I call that the G's Mikey special. Here's a priceless BVG 6 1958 Don Mossy, also $1. And pre-COVID, I, I bought this Bob Feller with a 1950 Cleveland Indians team set on eBay. It was the only graded card, but the entire team set was 40 bucks and there were 16 cards. So technically this one set me back $2.50. So there you go, Theo, and that concludes my VRs. Although I should have put Picker Jim at the end here so I could segue into the next part. So when I was elected to the YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame, part of the thrill was being able to go in with some really good friends. So I wanted to send out a baseball for all of my Hall of Fame class to sign for me. It took a while, but it finally came back. So let's see what we got. There's some extras from Jim and James. We'll get back to those. Oh, wow. Okay, so... There's Picker Jim, and there's James Elite Hunters with his little dog drawing. So cool. We got Brad8671, and I got to open this up to see Luz. Err. Err. Three hours later. All right. Okay. Lou Rock TV, and the biggest name on the ball, Bob. Now, I have quite a few signed baseballs, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. It means so much. Uh, thanks, guys. I'll have to figure out how to display this with my patch. Back to those extra goodies. These are from Picker Jim. We got Jim Tomey, 63 Sam McDowell, Kenny Hologram, Albert Hologram, Eddie Hologram, cool satch patch, Von Hayes rookie card. There's another one for you, Paul. Super Joe Charbonneau, Cy Young, and another Jim from Jim. Thanks, Jim. And it looks like James sent me a ball. Oh, wow. This is a signed Gaylord Perry ball. Extra awesome. I love it. Thank you, James. You guys are the best. Oh, one more thing. I wasn't quite sure about signing my own ball. It just seems kind of weird, but nobody signed the sweet spot. And it would be incomplete if I didn't sign it. So, okay, that's better. I've been making an effort to slow down on the eBay lately, but I bought a couple things cheap enough that I don't feel too guilty. Here's a Logan T. Allen autograph I picked up for the Guardians project. I picked up this 1952 Larry Doby for the binder. I'd still like a nicer one someday, but I think I paid around $30 for this one. And this one was inspired by a recent episode of Bowman 53's Card Room Live. They were talking about Diamond Stars cards, and there was a few cards that were never released, including this Mel Harder. And so this reprint set was made in 1981, and I found a signed one, so that was pretty cool. This was a Facebook purchase. I found a signed index card of Smokey Joe Wood for my 1920 World Series roster project. And B. Roth of Card Soup has become like my dealer of choice lately. He sold me this high number Joe Adcock and this dandy Jim Hegan. Not big names, but tough cards, and Brian is always super fair with me. Seems like a lot of YouTubers are going to shows and hanging out lately. There was the Dallas show, you know, and the show in Florida last weekend. And I went to the mainline show in Pittsburgh, which is always a fun time. This year, I met up with Mike from Canadian Cards, Abe Lincoln, and Bob Lewis. 
so much facial hair. Uh, I, also got, I also got to hang out with Dean Gerhardt and Math Bowler. Bob Lewis gifted me some cards. We got Jim Tomey, Dave Justice. I think that's some sort of refractor. Uh, Nick Chubb, Logan Allen, Otto, numbered in 499. 1978 Dennis Eckersley in really nice shape. And this Jim Tomey, numbered in 99. Awesome sauce from Bob. Thanks, Bob. And Math Bowler, who's always given me gifts. I thought I got him back this time when I brought him something cool, but then he pulled these out for me. We got 1971 Indians Rookies, which is definitely an upgrade to the one that I had. I think this was a Fleer sticker featuring Al Rosen, Julian Tavares autograph, and this neat Cracker Jack satchel page. Thanks, Stephen. We also ended up having dinner after the show, which has become sort of a ritual for us. He usually gets two meals. That guy can eat. Okay, here's what I bought. This is an American Caramel E121 Jack Graney. He's a Hall of Famer, but as a broadcaster, I believe. Uh, another American Caramel E121 Stan Kovaleski. Now, he's a real Hall of Famer, not that broadcasters aren't real Hall of Famers. You, you know what I mean. But I've been looking to get a Playing Days card of him for a little while. And check this one out. An absolutely stunning 1951 Wheaties Bob Feller. I love that thin orange border. It's just a great looking hand cut card. I hardly ever see the 51s, and I'm not really one to look up pop reports, but SGC has graded 11 of these, and PSA has graded maybe like 30. So I'm pretty excited to find this one. I feel like I say this all the time, but even if I hadn't picked up anything, it still would have been worth it to go and hang out with those guys. So that's it for now. Thanks again to all my best friends, Joe, Paul, and Leah, Jim, Sammy, and Theo for the VRs. Thanks to YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame class of 2023, James, Lou, and Bob, Jim again, and Brad for helping me with my baseball. Thanks to Mike, Bob, Dean, and Steven for hanging out with me in Pittsburgh. And of course, thank you guys for watching. Love your hobby and make it unique to you.